Well, we got ourselves a build here, boys. Uh, I'm very happy to report that that was a tier 100 pit. So again, monsters stop scaling at tier 100. Uh, level 199 monsters cleared with a Blood Surge minions build using both Cruar's Embrace, which I slated as literally unusable garbage, and Deathspeaker's Amulet. Who, who'd have thunk it, honestly? Now, if we're being very realistic, I think this build would literally strictly perform better as a pure Blood Surge build, dropping both this absolutely like near useless uh, piece of crap amulet and also these absolutely garbage gloves. But that being said, you get to live your wildest dreams. You get to finally have a Blood Minions build that uses this item that people have been pining after for nearly a year now since it was first introduced in the game. So let's go ahead and talk about it. Just for the people who don't necessarily know how these items work in tandem, I'm going to give a very quick TLDR for these things. If you're looking for either just the gear or the paragon or the skill tree, etc, etc, use the timestamps down below to skip around. But these are some pretty weird and interesting nuanced mechanics here, so I figured it would be worth our while to go over them very quickly. Crew Wars Embrace say that when you cast Blood Surge, you are going to consume corpses and you're going to get mini novas out of those corpses. Just to give you a very quick idea, determining how much damage these things do, considering they can crit and they overpower when you overpower, the base damage of this glove is a whopping 680. The base damage of your Blood Surge is a whopping 19,000 to 23,000. So you just take your Blood Surge damage and divide it by this to figure out what your average output is from it. Now, the secondary interesting thing about it, though, is that every single time that you consume a corpse, you're going to gain an additional 20% damage multiplier. Player. Considering there's a hard cap on how many corpses can be on the screen at any given time, I believe it's 17 or 18, that can only get up to a total of 360. So you basically take the base damage, you multiply it by 4.6. That's how this works. Um, it has the same 50% multiplier per drained targets according to how Blood Surge Nova works. They're very small. Does increasing blood surge radius increase this? I don't know. You shouldn't use increased blood surge radius because it is the worst tempering aspect that the Necromancer has other than blood lance duration, but we'll cover that in a different build. That speaker's amulet is kind of the OG. Whenever you cast blood surge, it casts a mini blood surge on top of all of your minions. This very similarly gets the 50% bonus if you drain at least five targets, but it doesn't have any other multiplier of its overall damage. So again, in an attempt to figure out how much damage this is doing, you take the 1000 damage here, you divide it into your Blood Surge Nova damage, and that is the differential in that damage. This one doesn't really scale other than that. While it does cast on every one of your minions, the minions have to be within range for it to work. And similarly, while Crewer's damage scales with corpses, if I make my golem go over here and drop five corpses, and I'm trying to kill something over here, those mini novas don't hit them. So this build is still an all-in build. You're still within close combat. You need to be able to survive that. It's basically just like triple down on Blood Surge's like miniature area damage, which helps to increase your single target damage. And that's basically what you're trying to get out of this. You don't really have to invest in your minions for them to be able to survive, at least in like tier 50 to about tier 70 pit. In tier 100 though, the only way that my minions are surviving is by using the defenders with 99% damage reduction, and then basically hoping that my mages don't get hit. So now that we got that out of the way, let's go ahead and look at the skill tree and we can talk about some of the changes or the decisions that I made there so you can better understand kind of how we're approaching this build. There are a couple different issues that you need to find a way to solve on this build, most notably the ability to generate essence, considering we don't have any generators, the incorporation of a corpse consumption package and the benefits that come along with that, and then attempting to scale your Nova damage as hard as possible. So to those ends, we don't care about a generator, maxing out Blood Surge with the ability to overpower, maxing out and perfectly balanced for more damage, and then Hued Flesh. The biggest issue with Hued Flesh here is that Hued Flesh is a 12% chance lucky hit effect. Blood Surge has a 12% Lucky Hit Chance coefficient. Now, I'm not currently running any Lucky Hit Chance bonus, but even if you were to have 100 Lucky Hit Chance bonus, that would take Blood Surge from a whopping 12% all the way up to 24%. And just to give you an idea of how this math plays out, 12% multiplied by 12% is a whopping 1.44% chance of something happening. You are effectively never triggering Lucky Hit Chance with your Blood Surge. But that's where both Crew Wars Embrace and Deathspeaker's Amulet comes back into play. 
Since all of these effects are being triggered by your Blood Surge, the Novas that they carry have your lucky hit chance as well. So even if your Blood Surge fails, one of your minions' Blood Surges may hit from Death Speakers, or one of the corpses' mini Novas may trigger lucky hit chance. So you do have a lot of overlapping or multiplying of your overall effectiveness, and what it basically comes out to is like a roughly like 20% chance that you're going to trigger anything when other builds may be sitting closer to about 100% chance to trigger these same things in different circumstances. So while it's not a dead stat and you absolutely need it to be able to continue to propagate the build's functionality, do not be surprised if you don't see lucky hit chance going off that often. I am putting the three points into spiked armor. I need an additional uh, armor roll somewhere on my gear to be armor capped. If you did not need that, you can absolutely take this out and potentially reinvest into your minion survivability at least a little bit. Or you could pick up movement speed here because we don't have a mobility aspect on our build to be able to fit all of the aspects in with the overlapping unique items that we're using. If you could, you would max out Grim Harvest and then obviously Fueled by Death. We are using Decrepify with Abhorrent Decrepify and then Amplify Damage and then Death's Embrace. In the Blood Tree, we're maxing out everything that matters. Obviously, we need Corpse Tendrils not only for Grasping Veins and the Crit Chance and the Damage Multiplier, but a huge source of Vulnerable since we really can't use our Mages for applying Vulnerable since we desperately need them for generating Essence against single target bosses. Down to the last part of the tree, I am putting three points into Golem Mastery because the Golem effectively enables the entirety of the build and gives you your only chance of success relying on your minions in general, so we need him to survive as often as he can. The three points into Inspiring Leader for all of us to get crit chance, and then obviously Bone Storm, and then Rathma's Vigor. Now that we understand the skill tree, let's go ahead and look at the aspects that are going to further empower that and touch on the stats that I think are the most important for your character. Remember that overpower damage is increased by your maximum life and your maximum fortify. You can fortify all the way up to your maximum life. So as you can see, I have a whopping 49,000 life. That means I can get 49,000 fortify and then gain a huge amount of additive overpower damage from these stats. So you basically want maximum life on every single piece of gear that you could possibly put it on including the temper effects. So outside of needing total armor, once you've reached that amount that you need, you want to go max life on as many gear pieces as you possibly can. I noticed that essence per second here was actually like pretty decent, especially when some of our mages were dying off, depending where we are in the battle. But I can very safely say that if you have the same stats as I do right here, you don't need essence generators. And that's like wild. I never thought I'd be able to say that on a blood surge build, but here we are. You'll notice I'm putting Hardened Bones, that's going to double dip on our damage reduction to increase our skeleton survivability even further and give us a really nice chunk of DR ourselves. And then if you could get things like cooldown reduction here or total armor, decrepify size is really nice. You don't have to keep doubling down on it, as you can see I already hit the entirety of the screen. You would also want Corpse Tendrils Radius, at least from the basic tempering kits. There are more specialized ones that you can get. I just don't have them, so I can't really recommend them because I don't know how they would change the build. For the armor, again, maximum life, total armor. Here we are also going with corpse tendril size. You can fix your resistances via tempering as well. And then I went with juggernaut for the massive amount of armor here. Obviously for Kruor's embrace, realistically, we don't care about the overpower damage or the core damage or even the chance to heal. Realistically, if you are master working this piece of gear, you want to triple crit on the blood surge ranks as the only thing that legitimately increases our damage. We are going with blood moon breaches. You really can't rely on your minions applying curses for you. I know that that would be cool if you could, but sadly you just can't. The maximum life along with the amp damage, the curse skills and the damage reduction is an incredible amount of survivability, increasing decrepify's DR value and slow percentage is like wildly overlooked and slept on in this game. And then obviously the ranks to amp damage give us another great damage multiplier. For the boots, essence per second, again, is making a really good showing on this build. If we could get maximum life and then movement speed and then also tempering on more movement speed and then either corpse tendrils or decrepify size. You notice that I fit on occult here in the boots. You obviously want as many minions as possible if you're gonna rely on them to be proc machines via Death Speaker's amulet. Nothing else much more to say. I do like attack reduces evade cooldown, especially with Juggernaut since we sit here and we spam cast Blood Surge at ridiculous speeds once we manage to overpower. So you can basically evade whenever you want to. Obviously for the Death Speaker's Amulet, the only things that you would care about successfully master working on this are Essence Cost Reduction, which is huge, and then the Coalesce Blood Ranks. Blood damage, 
we don't care about that. We don't care about blood damage. We have thousands and thousands and thousands of overpower additive damage. You don't need more. And then on top of that, the summoning damage on this thing is literally trash city. Now that your minions fully scale off of your damage, it would be really nice if they could take this summoning damage stat and basically erase it from the game altogether and then replace it with a much more desirable stat, either movement speed here, cooldown reduction, or something that would further enable the build to succeed in the ways that this amulet is hoping that it will. For the rings, there's a lot of different options, attack speed, critical strike chance, maximum life, vulnerable, crit, or any other really form of like valuable damage here as well. Essence cost reduction is just phenomenal. You'll notice that we had damage here. We would like damage to close as the biggest overall additive that we could possibly add here, but Quite frankly, as long as you hit the essence cost reduction, I don't think you have to worry about much else. This is where we're going to be putting on Grasping Veins, a huge amount of additional crit for our character. You can reach crit cap without it. I just haven't, so we need it. But then on top of that is a huge multiplier of our damage because, again, None of this damage is scaling off of our minions, it all scales off of us, so even the mini novas, both from your gloves and from your Death Speaker's amulet, will get the damage increase from corpse tendrils, but it turns out that right now, minions don't get the damage buff from Grasping Veins, that's something that's been tested very recently, I heard word of it, I think it's from C. Todd and GMS in the Sanctuary Discord via Ava, um, they've tested it out extensively, it sounds like it's not working, so that's just like, insane, but like, hey, what can you do? For the second ring, exact same thing, we would like to hit resource cost reduction as often as we possibly can, and then this is where we're putting Rathamus Chosen. We do need some attack speed somewhere, the increase in our attack speed here also helps not, in, not only our Golem to be able to hit, but on top of that our mages most noticeably, because that means that they'll be able to generate resources for us at a faster rate. Maximum life on the weapon, increased attack speed on the weapon, damage to close, and then what the is really going to like bring this build home, what's really going to make it successfully output damage against single targets is going to be that lucky hit chance up to 40% to trigger a large physical damage uh, effect on the target. So again, we can trigger the lucky hit and then all of our crew wars embrace uh, uh, blood surges can trigger lucky hit and then the death speaker can also trigger lucky hit. So this is drastically increasing our overall damage output. I was using Blood Surge Radius Increase before this, and basically like the difference with one roll on a piece of gear goes from like being able to hit a target from here to being able to hit the target from here. Do I believe that like if you had a focus and a weapon and then you triple master worked it, could we get a Blood Surge Radius that's like a lot more like being able to hit the target from over here? Almost certainly. And I do think that in like a perfect world, this will actually be cool enough to drastically increase your AoE clear speed. The thing being that Blood Surge has never had AoE clear speed issues. It's only ever had single target issues. So that's where the tempering for this like uh, physical damage lucky hit just vastly will outperform any other option that you have here. We are putting Blood Bathed. You'll notice that I don't even have a perfect roll in Blood Bathed, although it's pretty close here. I don't know why they nerfed Blood Bathed. They just nerfed it. It used to be 10%, now it's 15%. They kind of ninja nerfed a bunch of stuff uh, in the blood builds, and I will be touching on that in a different video, but like, that didn't need to happen. Lastly, we are going with a shield. While a shield won't give us as much damage, meaning that we're not scaling the Death Speaker's amulet and the Crewers Embrace at the highest level that we possibly can, shields do allow you to have damage reduction on another piece of gear, which oddly enough is really hard to find at this point but maximum life, attack speed, you can do cooldown reduction, damage reduction, and then tempering on more maximum damage and decrep size. And then this is where we're going to be imprinting Shielding Storm. For the minions themselves, we are going with the defenders, like I said earlier. We did some testing where basically this build kind of stalled out at effectiveness at tier 80 with no master working on the gear. But the major issue wasn't really like our damage output. It really wasn't our survivability at that point. It was our minion survivability. It just turns out if you don't actually invest into their survivability in any legitimate or uh, specific ways, you really can't use Reapers generating corpses, although Reapers generating corpses is a massive increase to our overall damage output, obviously. The defenders taking 99% reduced damage allows them to intercept and basically absorb incoming AoE damage or projectile damage, which gives your mages and your golem the best chances of being able to survive as opposed to being hit by like random lightning shock effects or the little charge bolts from lightning enchanted monsters. For skeleton mages, like I said, we are using them to generate essence. 
if we had no essence issues, like if I had perfect essence tempering, I would love for them to be able to apply vulnerable to targets because we just don't have permanent uptime on vulnerable. And that is a massive amount of our overall damage multiplication. Then lastly, for the golem, the thing that kind of activates the build is golem generates corpses when you activate them. So just being able to do this, be able to immediately set up corpse tendrils, respawn any of our minions that might have died, then immediately following up your corpse tendrils with being able to drop all these blood surges down onto targets. One localizes all of your extra Nova effects, but it's just one of the only ways to actually survive since they taunt. Then you get the corpse tendrils, now they're stunned. And then with Decrepify's ability to continuously perpetuate stun, you basically just hard lock all the monsters there until they're dead. Talking about the Paragon boards, the big approach here is basically get as much maximum life as possible, get enough resistances so that I can max out my res with imperfect gear, and then stacking on as much armor as possible so that I can afford to put more maximum life on my gear as opposed to more total armor rolls. So we are going with Amplify Damage in the starter board up into Scent of Death. This is where we're putting Dominate. Here's where the next ninja nerf has happened to Blood Builds. They nerfed Dominate for the Barbarian, and they just kind of copy and pasted that onto Dominate for the Necromancer. This is absolutely not intended. I am positive that they're going to address it, but it's just wild because this thing used to give you over 400 additive overpower damage. And now it gives you like a whopping 160. Please, 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 please stop screwing over blood necromancers because the barbarian is too strong. Even with these unintentional changes, I'd super appreciate it. Building up into your third board, and the reason why the third board is so important is because tenacity has a bonus for additional maximum life in bone graft. So this should be your third board so you can actually hit these minimum requirements. This is where we're actually just getting a minimum investment in essence. You may say like, well, hey, you're approaching crit cap. Why don't you want more crit damage? Again, we have thousands of additive damage. We don't need more slightly more specific additive damage. We only pick up additive damage nodes when they are like so largely overperforming other nodes that it's worth our time to invest into it. But here, the crit damage multiplier, the moment that they drop below healthy, is just huge for increasing your damage output. For our fourth board, we are building into Flesh Eater, and then this is where we're actually putting Control. Control, again, another 1.2 multiplier the moment that we drop our Decrepify on the crowd of monsters. You notice that we're picking up all the resistance as well as all of the damage nodes here because it's just the most efficient way to path through the board. And then I also literally need this 1.5 res right here to be capped. Building into the last board that like legitimately matters is Bloodbath. You may be like, Mac, isn't this like the overpower board? Like, why would you not build into this first? Let's Let's go ahead and look at all the rare nodes and what benefits they confer to the build. Here, if I were to meet the requirements of this rare node, I would gain 10 additive damage while fortified. That's nothing, fam. Down here, if I were to meet the minimum requirements of hardened, I would gain 10 additive damage while fortified. You're seeing a pattern here. Basically, we don't care about any of these nodes enough to make sure that we're going to hit the requirements for them. The only node that's like Vaguely interesting is Suffused Resilience, which gives us more all resistance, which you may need for your build. But at this point, I don't personally need it, so you can almost certainly reach those same requirements, even on like slightly worse gear than what I currently have. But this damage reduction from damage over time effects is definitely saving our skin against all those things I was complaining about before, and I'm positive it's one of the only reasons why we're clearing tier 100s without dying anymore. For the actual glyph, we're picking up Territorial, again, a minimum investment here, and it's basically just for the 10 damage reduction against close targets. You need as much DR as you could possibly fit on this thing. As this very cheeky little exit out, or we're going over to the Blood Begets Blood Board just to pick up Vampiric. Uh, the Blood Orb healing is nothing, but this is another 4, 6, 8% maximum life, which is huge for our build and absolutely worth the points just to path over to it. Now, how do I realistically feel about the build? I have to be honest with you, it vastly outperformed my expectations. When I started streaming today, so about five and a half hours ago, I basically told everybody, hey, I am positive this build is trash. I'm positive it's not gonna do anything and I'm willing to put it all together anyways because I'm okay with whether or not I can be proven wrong. You know, my ego can take a hit here. I can be wrong about things. And it really overperformed. I think it's doing significantly better than anyone was willing to give it credit for, myself included. That being said, these are only here to activate the corpse consumption package. And if I wasn't using this, I could be using a Ring of Sacrilegious Soul and effectively getting the same benefit out of it. 
the Death Speaker's amulet. Again, helping me to trigger a uh, lucky hit chance, similar to Crew Wars Embrace here. You know, pretty decent essence cost reduction, an okay plus to a skill rank that I care about, but I could have a three affix, two temper affix, significantly stronger amulet with an aspect that would actually further multiply my direct blood surge damage. And there's just no universe where this overperforms that, even with the benefit of the lucky hit chance. But I'm not here to rain on your parade. This is working. Tier 100 just cleared in front of your eyes. That's astounding, considering a ton of the nerfs that have come to Blood Surge indirectly from how they have changed things like Banish Lord's Talisman, how they have reduced the effectiveness of Tibalt's Will, how they just nerfed our Dominate Glyph, etc. It's really astonishing that Blood Builds can do anything at all, and that these two unique items together are part of a build that's doing it. So kudos to the fact that it's real that it does stuff i'm excited that people can actually play a blood minion build this is something that we have desperately been wanting for well not me i think it's terrible but the rest of you all in the community at large has been wanting this to be a thing for a very long time and hey here it is go for it uh, i will have an updated build planner down in the link below i'll have to create that so if it takes me like 24 hours or something like that like just stick around if you haven't already you can join the discord in the link below and that's where i keep all of my updated build planners until they are official builds on max roll that won't be for at least another month remember the next season doesn't start until may 14th but if you haven't joined the discord already what are you doing you silly little bumblebee get on down there come into the macro biome and hang out we got a bunch of nerds there always theory crafting stuff i'd love to have you Similarly, if you just started watching my videos here, or if you're a returning viewer, did you know you might not be subscribed to this channel? And isn't that buck wild? Like, where else are you going to go watch a video where you can actually make Death Speaker's Amulet a thing? That's right here, baby. You're going to find all of that right here. A lot of people watch my videos and don't even realize that they're not subscribed. So if you haven't checked that button, go ahead and click it. It would mean the world to me. We're on a huge, massive upward swing again because people actually think that the game's fun. And hey, I'm here to bring you the best guides that I possibly can. So making sure that you're up to date whenever I put one out will make sure that you can enjoy the game to the best of your own ability. Similarly, go ahead and toss a like onto the video. I'd really appreciate that. Thank you all so much for watching this video. If you have any comments, ideas, better ways of building this, let me know down in the comments. I'd love to hear from you. I'm really excited for this, and I hope that everybody else watching this video is just as excited. So sound off in the comments. I'd love to hear from you. Thank you so much for watching this video. I truly hope that it helps, and I look forward to seeing you in the next one.